Today we'll be discussing the major vocabulary related to sonata form. As you might recall from music history, sonata form has three main sections. The exposition, the development, and the recapitulation. The exposition, you might think about the similarity that word has to an expository essay. The word exposition basically means to present. And the job of the exposition musically is to present the main thematic material of the movement. So that's one of its two functions. The other function is that it also introduces the primary tonal conflict between the primary and the secondary key. If you have a major mode piece, the first key will be tonic, and the secondary key is most often the major dominant, as you can see over here. If you have a minor mode piece, typically what would happen most often is you'd start in the minor tonic and modulate to the relative major, so one to three in this case. Though it's also possible to modulate from the minor tonic to the minor dominant. Both of those options occur with some frequency. Most of what we'll be talking about today pertains to 18th century sonata form, though a lot of these elements do persist throughout the 19th century as well. The second main section is the development. This is very harmonically unstable compared to the other two parts, so it's the least tonally stable of the major sections. Things you are likely to find in the development include fragmentation of themes or sometimes quotations of portions of themes, sequences, and fairly frequent modulation. Now, not all of these elements have to be present in development. Some developments are very turgid and have very short fragments, lots of sequences, lots of modulation. Others are a little bit more calm and stick to only one or maybe two keys. So it really depends on the piece. However, by and large, this is the least stable portion of the sonata. The very end of the development usually has a retransition, so technically the retransition is still part of the development in this case. And like a lot of retransitions, the retransition at the end of a development will typically end on the dominant of the tonic key. A lot of different key areas are possible in the development, but what's interesting in 18th century sonatas in particular is that the development will almost always touch on the submedian, so six at some point. The third major section in a sonata form is called the recapitulation. Re means again, cap means top, so a recapitulation basically goes back to the beginning of the thematic cycle that was introduced at the beginning of the exposition. A recap is very similar to what we've been talking about in binary forms in terms of having a reprise. Both of them will go back to the original thematic material, most typically in the tonic key, having that double return of the opening theme in the original key. The job of the recapitulation is twofold. One is that it'll cycle through the thematic material from the exposition, revisiting all the major sections that were touched on in the exposition. But its second job, and probably the more important job, is a tonal job. In this case, resolving the tonal conflict by remaining in, or at least ending in, the tonic key. The simplest way to do this is to take all the material that had appeared in the secondary key in the exposition and simply block transpose it so that it appears in tonic for the recapitulation. So those are the three main sections. Moving on to the main themes within a sonata. So each of the four themes that we're about to discuss typically appear in both the exposition and the recapitulation of a sonata. So the opening theme is called the primary theme, at least in the vocabulary that we'll be using here. It's most often abbreviated P. The opening theme's job is to establish tonic and to initiate the sonata process. So in many ways, P is responsible for launching the sonata. It can be as short as a phrase. It can be substantially longer, containing multiple phrases or even multiple themes grouped into a larger section. However, this is the section that will establish tonic and launch the sonata. After the primary theme, oftentimes there is a transition, which we'll abbreviate as TR as we have been. This is the passage that connects the primary theme to the secondary theme. Most often the transition will begin with an increase of energy and ends with a lock on the dominant. So the increase in energy can come from things like denser orchestration, louder dynamic, a change in some sort of accompanimental figure, at the end of the transition, usually there'll be some sort of lock on the dominant, so either an elaborate dominant pedal or sometimes something as short as just a dominant chord. 
the transition itself may sometimes recycle material from the primary theme. If that is the case, we describe it as a dependent transition. Another option is for the transition to introduce new material. So in other words, not using material from P. In this case, we call that an independent transition. Next up in our order of items is the secondary theme, which is abbreviated as S. The secondary theme basically is the theme that's responsible for establishing the secondary key. That's where the name comes from. The goal of the secondary theme is to confirm that secondary key through a perfect authentic cadence. So in the recapitulation, what will happen is that the secondary theme will be transposed to appear in tonic. And so really it's about S achieving tonal resolution in the recapitulation. Several sonata forms also have a closing theme, which we'll abbreviate as C. This is optional. Not all sonata forms have a closing theme. So in other words, if you have more material after the perfect authentic cadence that closes down the secondary theme, that's when you know you have a closing theme. So this is the final stage of the exposition or recapitulation. Some closing themes sound like actual themes. Some of them sound more like codettas where we're just vacillating between tonic and dominant chords. There are a few significant cadences that recur frequently in sonata forms, and they have very specific names that I'm drawing from an approach called sonata theory that was developed by two theorists named James Hepikoski and Warren Darcy. One of these is the medial sejura. Medial means middle, sejura means pause. So the medial sejura, or MC for short, is the brief rhetorically reinforced gap that divides the exposition into two parts. So the first part of the exposition constitutes the primary theme and the transition. At the end of the transition is where we will get the medial sejura. The second half of the exposition is comprised of the secondary theme and the closing theme. In other words, the MC is the cadence that marks the close of the transition. This highlights the final cadence of that transition. Usually the transition will end with a half cadence, sometimes in the subordinate key, sometimes in the tonic key. Next up is essential expositional closure, or EEC for short. This is the most important cadence in the entire exposition. This is the first strongly articulated perfect authentic cadence in S, or in the secondary theme, that moves on to different material. So let's unpack that definition a little bit. It has to be a perfect authentic cadence. That's what actually confirms the secondary key, or the subordinate key. The other thing is that S has to actually end at that moment. So in other words, if you have an immediate repetition of material that was included in the secondary theme area, then you're not actually done with the secondary theme yet, and you have to look for the cadence that closes down that repetition instead. EECs can only appear in the exposition because EECs by definition are in the secondary key. In contrast, Essential structural closure, or ESC for short, can only appear in the recapitulation. Specifically, this is the first strongly articulated perfect authentic cadence that closes down S, closes down that secondary theme, and moves on to different material, in this case, the closing theme. That's assuming that there is more material to be had after that. There are some pieces that place the ESC in the very last measure of the entire piece. But in either case, ESC is the cadence that finally says, yes, we are arriving at tonic, we've reconfirmed tonic, we have rehabilitated our secondary theme in tonic, thus establishing tonal closure for the sonata movement. Next up, to put all of this into picture form, we have a typical outline of how this works together in the course of an entire sonata movement. We have our three main sections, our exposition, our development, and our recapitulation. Within the exposition, we have our four thematic areas, the primary theme, the transition, the secondary theme, the closing theme. We can see that the primary theme and at least the first part of the transition typically are in tonic. The transition drives to the medial sejura, the MC. Now at this moment, the sonata could either be in the primary um, tonal area or the second tonal area. So this could be either a half cadence in tonic or a half cadence in dominant. But there will, in most cases, be a medial sejura separating the first half of our exposition from the second half of our exposition. 
As you can see, the second half of the exposition is in the secondary key area, and assuming that we start with a major mode piece, we're going to modulate to the major dominant. S, the secondary theme, will drive to a perfect authentic cadence, ending with essential expositional closure, or EEC for short. And then if there is more material, we'll have the closing theme after that. Typically, the entire exposition would be repeated, which was why I've included repeat signs here. After the exposition closes, then we get the development. There's not a lot I can put schematically here because there are a lot of different plans that are possible. The development often will pull at least some thematic material from the exposition, but it often is not all four thematic zones. One option that's extremely common, for instance, is for the development to start with material drawn from P and then at some point to switch over to material that's derived from C. Similarly, there aren't a finite number of tonal plans that are possible in development. As I mentioned earlier, it's typical for the development to touch on the submedian at some point, but even that is not included in all developments. This passage will be characterized by fragmentation and modulation to some degree, though. The development will e usually end with a retransition. That retransition will usually end with a half cadence, after which point we get the recapitulation. Again, the recap goes through the same cycle of themes introduced in the exposition, primary theme, transition, secondary theme, and closing theme. Once again, we'll have a medial caesura that's separating the first half of the recap from the second half of the recap. One thing that's different from the exposition, though, is you'll notice that the second half of the recap has now been transposed to be in tonic. There's a few ways that this can be accomplished. The simplest solution is just to block transpose these two so that they appear in tonic. More often, there'll be some slight adjustments in texture register, maybe mixing up things like orchestration possibly or range in order to come up with a solution that works well for the rest of the sonata. More substantial edits are also possible. The medial caesura in this case will end in tonic. If the exposition had a transition that modulated and ended with a half cadence in the dominant, the transition in the recap will often be modified. This can be shorter, longer, or the same length, but the tonal plan will be modified so that it ends with a half cadence in tonic rather than in dominant. So that's a summary of a major mode sonata form. Major mode sonata forms, especially in the late 18th century, are much more common than minor mode sonata forms, though of course minor mode sonata forms do exist. Comparing these two charts, the only difference between them actually is the key scheme. If you start in a minor key, most often the secondary key will be the mediant key, the relative major. One other interesting thing about minor sonata forms in particular is that the recap will typically go back to tonic minor, but the secondary theme and the closing theme in the recapitulation can be brought back either in tonic minor or in tonic major, which is kind of an interesting option. The choice between these two really varies by composer. Mozart, for example, pretty much always brings his secondary theme back in tonic minor. Beethoven and Haydn use both options in different pieces with some frequency. And finally, to wrap up with just a few notes about sonata form in general that we haven't covered already. Sonata form is the default option for first movement of any multi-movement sonata cycle piece. So these include sonatas, string quartets, piano trios, and symphonies. Pretty much anything that's in your standard three movement or four movement form. Sonata form is also one of the three common options for finale movements. So sonata is about as likely as both rondo and sonata rondo to be selected for the form of a final movement of those same sort of multi-movement works, sonatas, string quartets, piano trios, and symphonies. Now other options are possible, but that's the expectation going in. If you sit down to a symphony at a concert, it's extremely likely that that first movement will be in sonata form. Second point, early sonata movements typically have two sets of repeat signs, one for the exposition and the other for the block containing the development and the recapitulation. We actually saw this in the schematics above, where the exposition is typically repeated and the development and the recap together are repeated as one big block. What's interesting is that the likelihood of having those varies depending on where you're at in music history. Early say mid-period 18th century sonata forms typically will have both of those repeat signs included. 
By the late 18th century, often the second set of repeats was dropped. So you get a repeat of the exposition, but you don't get a repeat of the combination of the development and the recapitulation. And then some movements around that time and a little bit later drop all of the repeats. And so you just get one pass through each of those sections. Though it is interesting that some composers like Brahms retained the repeat of at least the exposition fairly late into the 19th century. So this again is something that varies from composer to composer and piece to piece. Sonata form shares aspects of harmonic structure, basic thematic design, and repeat scheme, at least in early examples, with continuous rounded binary. Continuous rounded binary, like sonata form, is tonally open in the first big section. Rounded binary, like a sonata, has this reprise of the double return of the opening theme in the opening key. And like binary form, sonata form, at least in its early manifestation, has two sets of repeats. So two big sections that are each flanked by repeat signs. There's an interesting connection between those two. In other words, one way of describing it is that sonata form is basically a continuous rounded binary on steroids. And then last point, I mentioned this earlier, but sonata terminology varies from one theorist and book to another. So for instance, what I'm calling the secondary theme is also called the subordinate theme or sometimes the second tonal area. And there's a few other names that have been used throughout music history. For simplicity's sake and for clarity's sake, I'm gonna stick with the terminology that I'm deriving from sonata theory as formulated by James Hepikoski and Warren Darcy. So that's an introduction to the basic terminology of sonata form. And next we'll start looking at some individual pieces that are examples of sonata form.